या हेलो अनुष्का गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सो हाउ आर यू यस सर आई एम फाइन थैंक यू सर यू आर फाइन सो वर आर यू स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम सर आई एम फ्रॉम भुवनेश्वर ओडिशा ओह यू आर इन भुवनेश्वर सो भुवनेश्वर हैज बिकम वेरी नाइस नाउ डेज यस सर क्लाइमेट इज वेरी गुड एंड द सिटी इज वेरी क्लीन सिटी सो हु इन व्हिच एरिया यू स्टे सर भुवनेश्वर सर भरतपुर एरिया नियर खंडगिरी नियर खंडगिरी भरतपुर एरिया I am also very close by in IIT Bombay, sir. Uh, yes, okay, okay. So we will give two minutes time to you. You please introduce yourself, telling about your MSc dissertation. Then what are the other interest subject of interest? Mm -hmm. Then what is your hobby? Please tell. So, sir, uh, good morning, sir. My name is Anushka Mishra. I am from Bhubaneswar, Odisha. I have done my post graduation from Banaras Hindu University, and my graduation from Raven. university some of my hobbies include doing mandal art and gardening and uh, this is my third attempt at uh, gsi and my second interview okay okay i think we have met earlier isn't it did once yes no? sir yes sir okay. yes sir yes. <laughs> okay. okay okay so i think you must have prepared very well uh, this time at least we wish you good luck because every time you are qualifying you. preliminary mains but this bye bye you know is little blocking you yes uh, we will try to remove yes, those shortcomings let us see let yes. us hope for the best uh, so yes. your msc during your msc time there was no dissertation isn't it uh, yes sir uh, okay my dissertation was in structural geology on the fracture mm -hmm. and the shear zone analysis of bundelkhand granitoids in the yeah. bundelkhand craton i remember now i remember yes 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 so you had worked in bundelkhand craton okay so i will not ask yes, uh, this bundelkhand craton part particularly but suppose i ask you how many such cratons are there in india sir there are five cratons in india two cratons in the north yes sir two cratons in the northern peninsula and three cratons in the southern peninsula two cratons in the northern peninsula are bundelkhand craton and aravalli craton three cratons in the southern peninsula are singhum craton bastar craton and dharwar craton very good uh better not to say aravalli craton you know aravalli has yes, become sir. a mobile belt tikambrian mobile belt but to say marwad craton marwad Mar craton lies west of aravalli in delhi mobile belt it lies to the west okay, okay. so that is mostly covered by the sand but it is existing that is marwad craton okay yes, okay now then you have many mobile belts also Yes, sir. In India, so yes, can sir. you name can you name three important mobile belts? Ah, uh, sir, uh, three important mobile belts. One will be the Himalayan mobile belt. Then will be the ah, uh, uh, Satpura mobile belt, Eastern Ghat mobile belt, Pandian mobile belt. Aravalli Delhi mobile belt is also. Aravalli yeah. Delhi mobile belt. Mobile yes, sir. Yeah. Aravalli Delhi. See, see, what is the difference between Himalayan mobile belt and uh, say Satpura mobile belt? Sir, Himalayan mobile belt are very younger in stage as compared to the Satpura mobile belt. And Satpura okay. mobile belt, there is no such tectonism activity seen today. But in Himalayas, Delhi, some kind of tectonic activities are seen because it is still growing and it is very much younger as compared to the. What is the age? Younger means what is the age? Age is ah vision. Hello. Boys, boys, got over. Boys, yeah. Hello. 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 Yes, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Audible now, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, ah, uh, um, Himalayan mobile belt is Cenozoic in age. Means the uh, collision took place in the early Eocene, and thus it is a very now growing stage, early Eocene. And Satpura mobile belt are generally Proterozoic mobile belts. Good, good. Around. Say fifteen hundred to two thousand million year back. Ah, uh, two thousand so million years. So Himalaya yes, is US in means forty million year back. The Himalayan belt was. Yes, far. sir. Okay. Now, uh, uh, since you did your MBC from uh, Banaras Hindu University, uh, so there are very good teachers there. You know, do you like metamorphic petrology? Yes, sir. You like metamorphic petrology. 
Yes, sir. No, I, I, I don't think you give a very good smile on this question. You know. Yes, <laughs> anyway, okay. No, I will ask very simple questions. If I have to ask, I will ask some very simple questions. Uh, uh, suppose a basic rock is being metamorphosed. Yes, sir. Basic basic rock is being metamorphosed. So, what are the minerals will develop in green cyst phases and amphibolite phases and granulite phases? Uh, sir, in green cyst phases, uh, the minerals we can have chlorite, biotite, epidotite. Then in uh, amphibolite phases, we can have hornblende. Apart from it, we can have quartz crystallization also. And in granulite phases, we can have orthopyroxene. And um, orthopyroxene only. I can remember this much now. Okay. okay. Uh, you forgot one very important mineral, you know. That is called sir, first plagioclase Plagioclase feldspar. But it is okay. Uh, so okay. what is the plagioclase feldspar develops in green sea species? What type of plagioclase feldspar? Mm. Sir, uh, albite. Albite. Very good. Albite. So in amphibolite species also, mm. albite and is in. Yes, sir. Albite. But if you go to granulite species, it may be labradorite or bitonite. Yes, or higher calcic plagioclase is crystallized. Very good. Yes. Suppose if I go to a pelletic rock, Pelletic rock. Yes. Yes, sir. So, pellet, so what are the assemblages in green cyst species and amphibolite species? Mm -hmm. uh, green cyst species, uh, pelletic. Uh, so pelletic are generally the means um, if the host, I uh, means the parent rock will have some uh, means the potassium or uh, means clay mineral associations. If they will be metamorphosed, then that will be called as pelletic. So we can expect moscovite generally or the clay minerals in the green spaces moscovite and uh, biotite also so i can remember this much i'll read about it sir okay please go through it there is a biochloride yes, zone there is a biotite zone so zones you should yes, remember for pelletic assemblages that yes, will tell you what are the minerals that will develop but yes, in amphibolite phases you will find storolite carnite silmanite and granulite yes, phases again you will get hypersthene Melting rock melting. Okay. Now, Bundelkhand granite, there are, is there any uh, migmatites? Yes, sir. We have found migmatites in Bundelkhand. Okay. So these migmatites are there many places in India, you know. Many places. Yes, sir. Rajasthan. Yes, so, what is the reason why migmatites develop? And what is a migmatite? Sir, sir migmatite are generally. Uh, Form due to the partial melting of the igneous rock, as they will go to high temperature and pressure, they will uh, they will go on melting, and a very much uh, different kind of rock called migmatite will be formed, comprising uh, some leucosome, melanosome, and paleosome, neosome also. The typical feature uh, by which we can identify a migmatite is due to the pigmatic foldings developed on the surface. Okay, so there is melting, isn't it? Rock melting takes place. Yes, sir. So, what could be the uh, approximate temperature when this melts? Uh, so, generally, the melting is known as anatexis or palingenesis, and it takes place above uh, 800 degrees Celsius around. 800, 800 to too 9. Too high, not 800, 650 degrees. Very accurately, it is 650 degrees. In amphibolite phases, in upper amphibolite phases, yes, not sir. in granulite phases. 800 is granulite phases. Very high temperature. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, we will go to something, you know, which is related to the economic geology, you know, and structural yes, geology. Now, uh, Odisha is famous for many economic minerals or ore minerals, yes, you can say. So, what yes, are sir. those minerals uh, found in Odisha? Sir, uh, first, uh, we will found high, um, high amount of bauxite. Then, uh, uh, Odisha <laughs> stands in the first number for the chromite production, iron production, okay. graphite production. Okay. And many okay. kind of placer deposits also. Okay. Iron, manganese, bauxite. So iron deposits are occurring where? In which formation? Sir, iron, uh, iron generally occur in the Singhum Craton only in majorly three belts. Which belts? First will be the Koru Mahisani, Badam Pahat, Sulipat. Second will be Tomka Daitari. Third will be Bonai Kyunchar or Koeda Naumandi bed. Oh, great. Yes, you are remembered. So, where is chromite then? 
the chromite has generally uh, chromite we get in odisha in two places uh, that is in sukinda valley and the bowla nuasai valley there actually the ultramafic intrusion into the iron node belts only occurring as a host rock in periodotite and dunite and all the ultra basic rocks also good very good very good and bauxite bauxites are generally occurring as plateau or cappings in the eastern ghat uh, mobile belts generally they are formed due to the bauxitization process of the condalite from the charnokites present in the eastern ghat mobile belt okay what is the bauxitization the bauxitization uh, bauxitization is a process in which uh, it can take place in many host rocks like it is different from different region in you know uh, eastern ghat mobile belt actually bauxitization takes place in the condalite and charnokite what happens is that uh, there is a means of ph of 5 to 7 is required dry uh, wet and uh, tropical climate and intensive rainfall is required so that the silica can dissolve and leach out leaving behind the bauxite that can again uh, that can form into the mineral deposits of aluminum such as bauxite and gibbsite bohemite diaspores very good very good now uh, tell me uh, even in the eastern ghats you know there are many Uh, what i should say uh, this placer deposits what yes, are the placer deposits the placer deposits are generally the deposits which are generally placed alongside of a uh, seashore valley or a river valley so they are mm -hmm. actually formed by the weathering of the river and the heavy minerals which are having um, specific gravity greater than 2.87 g per cc they are generally deposited along the sea side or a river side some of the placer deposits can include zircon rutile ilmenite which are found in the uh, coastal good, plains of odisha good 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 so there is one more important famous deposit in odisha is coal deposits coal deposits yes, also you should talk so coal deposits yes, occur in which formation the coal generally occur in the lower gondwana formations lower gondwana formations can you name the gondwana formation sequence yes sir uh, sir first at the base will be talchi then uh, um then raniganj uh, uh talchi then damura then panchet above it will be the unconformity then uh, will be the uh, jabalpur formation uh, jabalpur then maleri then uh, okay kot, uh, kota okay. formations that is the upper upper gondwana upper okay. gondwana yes sir. very good very good so in india you know there are many gondwana rift valleys there are yes, several sir. gondwana rift valleys Can you name some of them? Sir, so, there are majorly three Gondwana Rift Valley. They are Son Damodar Valley, Mahanadi Valley, and Krishna Godavari Valley. Good. Is there any other Rift Valley in India? Ah, uh, sir, uh, um, Narmada Son Narmada is a Rift Valley. Son Narmada okay. is a lineament and Rift Valley. Also. Okay, but these are also part of Gondwana Rift. Part of Gondwana Rift. Yes, sir. But apart from that, you yes, have Barber sir. Rift, Kutch Rift. Barmer, cuts where hydrocarbons are yes, occurring. That also you should include in the western side of India. Okay. Now I will ask you some structural geology questions because you sir. have done MS in geology, yes, though it is little far. Yes. Uh, how to distinguish a fault and a shear zone? Uh, sir, first of all, sir, generally formed due to the brittle deformation, and the shear zone are generally formed due to the ductile deformations. so in uh, okay. fault there is a loss of cohesion but in the ductile shear zone there is no loss of cohesion so what are other fabrics other fabrics in cohesive but in fault we can see silicon sides silicon lines then uh, repetition omission of strata in shear zones we see many different things such as the development of mylonite sc fabric porphyroclast mica uh, mica fish and then uh, fractured uh, grains Many different things we can see in the shear uh, shear zone. Very good, very good. Ah, uh, okay. I am through, but I am finding a lot of improvement with you. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, are you writing down something or what are you doing now? Ah, uh, sir, actually, about... I am writing down what uh, things. Ah, uh, means I need to read a part. Okay, means okay. how I need good. to improve. I am writing out the things. Okay, okay very good. No, no, no. I am not telling that. But only thing advising you, you are making good eye contact. Absolutely no problem. But while speaking, you just make a good eye contact. You write down. You write down. We will not stop you because some of the points you may forget later. Yes, I think you have prepared well this yes, time. Sir. You have prepared well. Your personality and your body expression is very good this time. I wish you best. 
best let us see let us hope for the best this time you should qualify yes, sir. okay okay over to thank you, sir. thank you thank you thank you sir thank you anushka thank you sir thank you anushka yes sir yes sir good morning sir sir am i audible yes yes you are audible Yes, Anushka, sir. since you have done your MSc from Banaras Hindu University and it is very near to the river Gangaji, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what is the nature of river Gangaji when it comes to define in the context of groundwater? Sir, uh, if you will divide into the, uh, it gets divided into many, uh, many different groundwater provinces while coming into river Ganga, then it generally forms in the Indo Gangetic plains. The condition in river Ganga is in the indo gangetic plains. Sand, alluvium, and some kind of silt and silt and clay forms the different reservoir or the different aquifer system for storing of the groundwater in Ganga River system. Okay, so what would be the stream type? The, the stream type, uh, drainage type will be dendritic type in river Ganga. Dendritic type, okay. So it is effluent or influent? <clears throat> Sir, it is effluent because it is a perennial river and uh, year-wide water is there, so it is effluent. Is it for the perennial river or there is something uh, else? Um, sir, I could not understand the question. Okay. So, um, there are rivers originating from the Himalayas, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But all of them are not uh, perennial rivers. Yes, sir. Right. So, uh, what is the special speciality, or what are the special features that makes the Ganga Ji as a perennial river? Sir, Ganga is perennial river. First of all, that um 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 the means uh, the the glacier uh, from which Ganga erupts, that is the Gangotri glacier. It is a, a very much high water fading glacier. Second, uh, Ganga is an actual river that joins at it at many different places. So, mm -hmm. it is just a perennial river getting water all throughout the year. Okay. okay. So, in Pryagras, there is a point uh, called Sangam. Have you heard yes, of sir. it? Okay. Yes, sir. There, where Yamunaji meets Gangaji. Yes, sir. Right. And after that, the Yamunaji is no, nowhere found. So, what we call this phenomena? River piracy or river capture? River capture. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you give some conditions for river capturing? So river capturing uh, generally a change in the slope will be there. Means uh, there will be high flowing river and there will be a low flowing river. So when the low flowing river will uh, flow into the high flowing, then it will capture in a flow along with it, uh, along with its slope. Then uh, if the high flowing river will have a river rejuvenation. So it can means uh, if there will be a difference in the gradient along which it flows, then also river capturing can be done depending upon the topography of the main river. So do you think in the Priyagraj or near the Banaras, which is almost the part of indo gangetic plain, so there is much difference in gradients or slopes? Uh, no, there is not not much uh, different in the gradient, but uh, generally the Ganga River is very high flowing. Means the water content capacity is very high in Ganga. That's why only it has captured the river Yamuna. Okay, so uh, there is specifically a bacteria found in uh, water of River Ganga Ji. Are you aware of it? Uh, no, sir. I will read about it. Uh, we say that the water of Ganga Ji never gets contaminated or polluted. Uh, no, sir, I'll read about it. Okay. So, uh, let it be then. So, uh, can you differentiate between the taxonomy and taphonomy? A taxonomy are defined by how generally we um, segregate or classify different organisms. Means by the species, genus, this thing. And taphonomy is defined as a, means um, it is a sequence of process from the death of an organism to its burial. That process is known as taphonomy, but naming process is taxonomy, taxonomical classifications. Okay. Till the burial only or to the final conversion? Uh, uh, to the final conversion, sorry. Okay. What are the basic differences between the geomorphological aspects of Eastern Ghat and Western Ghats? 
the geomorphological aspects is that uh, western ghat are generally very high reach means uh, the height of the mountains are very high as compared to the eastern ghat the reason is that the western ghat are comparatively younger than the eastern ghat mm -hmm. apart from that uh, the many rivers dissect the eastern ghat means the eastern ghat is not a continuous range of mountains whereas the western ghat are a continuous range of mountains because many river dissect the eastern ghat apart from that um, eastern ghat are generally uh, much longer in their length as compared to the western ghats okay so let's suppose there is a climate uh, change conditions are establishing uh, currently in those days so do you believe the climate change is real or it is just a hoax? Uh, sir, I could not understand. Can you please repeat? Do you believe that there is a climate change? Uh, sir, now? Uh -huh. uh, yes, sir. There is, of course, a climate change now because the temperature uh, has risen uh, very high as it was before 30 to 40 years ago. The climate change is due to the different global warming features and uh, many different like industrial um, waste man uh, where industrial smoke release, vehicular pollution, air pollution, water pollution. So many different climatic changes are triggered by many different factors. Okay. So what is the average temperature of our earth surface? Uh, so average temperature, uh, hospitable temperature of uh, 18 to 21 degrees Celsius is no, no, the average temperature of the earth surface only, land part. Um, uh, so 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, read about it, okay. So, let's okay. suppose there is a climate change and we are uh, experiencing this climate change in terms of the rain patterns. Yes, so, sir. we are getting the high magnitude rains, but the frequency is getting less, right? Yes, yes sir. So, will it impact uh, the groundwater recharge in peninsular region or it will result into the all of this surface runoff? Sir, if you are having a different rain, then it will definitely affect the peninsular region because maximum of the peninsular region are generally made of high, means hard terrain, generally the igneous and metamorphic terrain. So if there will be a discontinuity in the rain, then it will widely affect how the confined aquifers generally, uh, means how the different aquifers may be confined or unconfined, how they get recharged, it will be widely affected, especially in the peninsula. That's the question, Anushka, how it will affect. So due to the climate change, we are getting the high magnitude rainfall. So we are getting a lot of volume of water in a single rain instead of in the multiples. So the... So the frequency of the rainfall is getting less, but whenever the rainfall is occurring, the volume of precipitation is high. The quantum of water that earth surface receives is high, right? So whenever we are getting a large quantum of water in terms of rainfall in a very low time, so yes, how sir. it will affect the groundwater recharge in peninsula region only? Yes, sir very short period of logging or the water logging generally. So if water logging will be there, then the permeability or how the groundwater get recharged in the deep confined aquifer will be affected because due to water logging, many different bacteria can be formed. So they will generally coagulate the soil and the percolation limit of the soil will generally decrease. In that way, it can be affected. So we are we getting a very uh, thick uh, layer of uh, soil in the peninsular region or as compared to the indo plain? So, so most of the groundwater is charged through the fractures only, na? so it will seep, not the percolation. It will seep through those fractures. Uh, yes, sir. So will it be a bliss, bless or a curse? Yes, sir, it will be a bliss. Okay. Okay. So I'm through also. Uh, Biswal sir, over to you, please. <laughs> So I think this time Anushka has prepared quite well, I should say. Thank you, sir. So over these you, sir. two two preparations, you know, which could not give her good results this time, I think you have prepared very well. You have prepared very well. Uh, sometimes I found you know it becomes a little speedy, little speedy, you know. Mm -hmm. You you be slow, be confident. Uh, there may be questions you know which you do not know. That does not mean. 
that you should answer all questions. But I am finding you very well this time. And I wish you good luck. Definitely you. you will qualify this time. Yes, yes. I am very much sure. Anushka, yeah. have you appeared for the Thank interview? You, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is my second time. Okay. So how many marks did you get in last time? Sir, 128. 128. Uh, this time you will be getting more than that. You know, 120 is a good mark, na? What is the 128 top is a very good mark, sir. It yes. is almost the top end. Yes. But the written was a little poor, isn't it? Yes. That's why I could not qualify. Oh. Sir, actually, okay, my score huh? was less in the prelims in previous year. Prelims. Oh. I see. I see. Let us see. Let us hope for the best this time. Let us see. Okay. All the best. All the best. All the best. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Carry on.